It's not unusual for most of these m****s to live a double life, but there are only a handful of those who got exposed on the show. Like this dude right here who claimed to get in touch with a setup to talk about things like baseball and football. Let this guy in. So when 39-year-old Anthony Sorrentino came knocking at the door, nobody expected him to take responsibility for anything. The man who took barely 10 minutes to go from a casual talk to the real hardcore stuff was excited to have his way at the Sting House. If I have to give you a gist of the chat logs, then to say that the exchange was direct and disgusting would be an understatement. Sometime during the conversation, Anthony began to worry about something serious. How do I know you're not a cop? Duh, I don't know. Now, this is something most creepos do. Anthony is not the first guy I've seen who brought up the suspicion in the online chat. Well, this goes to say a lot about them. For one, they knew what they were doing was illegal. And the other thing is that they knew that the cops were on to predatory men. It's crazy how they think the person on the other side would respond, saying something like, Hey, yeah, lol, I'm a cop. Gotcha. Dude. You should have backed out the minute you were suspicious, but the problem is that these freaks are so consumed by their fantasies that they simply can't think straight. And guess who showed up at the Sting House literally 15 minutes later? Anthony, who worked as a waiter, simply couldn't wait anymore. The crew first received a call where this prick wanted to confirm the directions to the house, and soon enough, found himself knocking at the door. You sit here if you want. Just sit down. You want something to drink or anything? Did you notice something? Anthony pretty much barged into the house and almost walked past the setup to make his way to the bedroom, perhaps. Yeah, this dude was in a hurry to get things over and done with. He would have been gone in a jiffy and nobody would even know. So clearly Anthony was a fast mover. And these are the worst of the lot. They can be very unpredictable, which meant that before he sent something fishy, Chris would have to intercept him. Well, it was now time to show the loser who was the real boss. While most weirdos are visibly shocked at Chris's presence, this dude's reaction was something else. What are you doing here? Relax, just calm down. Can someone explain to me what that was? This dude was here in some random house at some random hour with some really filthy intentions brewing up inside his dirty little brain, and he gets to be the one who's rolling his eyes at Chris? For a moment, it looked like Anthony was disgusted seeing Chris in the same house. Something like, dude, you're here too? Or something like, damn, I knew this kid gonna bust my balls. Either way, he wasn't in any position to intimidate Chris. If at all, that was his next course of action in any way. But it's his excuse that never fails to get it. What were you going to talk about? I don't know. Baseball? Baseball. Yeah, right. So you came dashing towards this stranger's house just to get the latest sports update? I I'm sorry, but does he think Chris was dumb or something? Because why was he even wasting time trying to cook up some crazy stories that would never add up? Right from, oh, I just wanted to hang out, and things like, hey, I never would have done anything, really. Man, save your energy for later, because you're going to need a ton of it pretty soon. Meanwhile, Chris decided he was done with this guy. That's it. It was now time for the great reveal and bam, the cameras popped right out. It wouldn't be wrong to say that Anthony was completely lost for words, but, but it's Chris who left me in stitches with his savage statement when he said this. So you've seen the show. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're on it. Ha, <laughs> you have to give it to him, guys. Chris is so spontaneous that he can take on anybody with his wit and wisdom. So who the hell was this guy trying to roll his eyes at? If anything, the real intention behind his visit was finally exposed during the interrogation when he said this. I was just really and I didn't know what I was gonna do. Yeah, so that's more like it. So finally we got to see at least one guy who made an honest confession. But that doesn't mean he wouldn't be thrown into the slammer. Our man here did 17 months in prison before being released. The last I heard was that he was desperately looking for a job on a website which is aptly named HireXFelon.com. Well, I'm not sure if he landed on anything, this next dude who had a pretty decent job decided to throw it all away just to fuel his fantasies. 
Texans. The next man to arrive at our undercover house in Florida is a 22-year-old college student and chemistry teacher. What I mean is, after coming across guys like this one, I cannot look at the teaching profession in the same way I did before. Yep, here comes Deepak Bist, a chemistry teacher whose dark side was exposed when he got rounded up at the sting house. And guess what's even crazier? Deepak was just 22 at the time. But the very fact that he struck up a conversation with the girl and then showed up at the house was enough to get him jailed. By the way, he also mentioned the show during the chats, and of course gave her a warning to stay clear of guys like himself. Despite all the wisdom he just bestowed upon the setup, Deepak couldn't hold himself back from showing up at the sting house. Very nice. What are you doing here today? Nothing. 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 Yeah, that's like pretty much the first line of defense most of these come up with. But Deepak was no regular guy. He was a gentleman. And you're about to see why I said that. Thank you. Well. Yeah, this man brought all the right things with him, right from flowers to chocolates and whatnot. Well, not so fast, buddy. Dateline show that you were talking about sometime earlier. Don't get a sheet right over there. So we have chocolate? Yeah, this is the same guy who thought that shows like TCAP were super funny during the chat. So, it's not so funny anymore now that you're caught in the same situation, right? That blush on his face was so evident as he laid out the different gifts he got for the setup, but once Chris walked in, that smile pretty much disappeared forever. But let me tell you what was funny. Deepak ever so easily blamed the setup for his presence in the house. She asked me to come. She did. Yes, she did. I did not. I told her it's not, it's not appropriate. Wow, how convenient is it to make yourself seem like the better guy, huh? Deepak shifted the blame completely and sat back with folded hands taking a defensive stand. So what was he here for exactly? Did the setup call him over for some private tuition? However, this young teacher decided to wash his hands of everything when he said this. No, I don't want to You don't want to have Okay, so let's assume for a second that maybe, just maybe, this guy was here to educate her about the different kinds of peds who roam at large. In which case, how does he explain the pack of balloons in his pocket that he brought along? So do you always make stops at some random place with a bunch of flowers, chocolates, and s Well, something didn't seem to add up and even Deepak realized his excuse was too dumb for anyone to accept. And so, he was back to where he started, which was to blame the setup all over again. Wait, does he not realize that Chris actually has the entire transcript of the chat logs? I think he should quit trying to be the ideal gentleman who couldn't turn down a young lady's plea. But his reaction to the cameraman popping out was way more exciting than the entire confrontation. Just as the crew started to pool in, this is how he reacted. If there's anything else you'd like to tell us. Um, I think you're a little too late for that, buddy. There were at least four different cameras who've shot your every angle from different corners of the room. So trying to hide under your hoodie is gonna make no difference now. I guess when he spoke about the sting operation in the chat, he didn't know that they actually shot the entire thing. Well, surprise, surprise. This is the real deal. Back in the police headquarters, Deepak tried to explain how he was lured into the house. And, well, I can't really deny that, because it's somewhat true. And, yep, he fell for it. With that, let's go from a guy who just hit his 20s to a guy who could easily be the setup's father. So, so who's your daddy, huh? Wait, don't get me wrong. Because this is what our next weirdo, Gregory Stewart, went by. So, this meeting was set at the beach, and just as he arrived, he first started trotting, and then sprinting, and soon it looked like he was almost chasing the setup down. If I were in the same position, I'd honestly run for my life, because ain't nothing more scary than a creepo behind your back. I mean, kudos to these actors who step into these daring jobs. I mean, these are real-life villains who could flip at any second. So it must take a lot of courage to actually be so close to these jerks who could snap at any time. 
Well, of course the cops were just waiting around the corner, but as they say, nothing was planned and they had to improvise on the go. And of course, a great part of it was to gather enough evidence to nail these guys through and through by initiating confessions like this. So I see you like younger girls? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, so the setup managed to successfully get him to admit his crazy fantasies on camera. I think she had some personal grudge against him because this guy actually showed up with a pineapple pizza. Which makes me wonder, what do you think they do with all the gifts that they receive at the Sting House? Let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, before I forget, this dude also had a pack of rubbers on him. So you see, this man was completely prepared for some action. You can see how he couldn't stop grinning. And that's when Chris decided to step in and give this loser a piece of his mind. Please don't arrest me, please. I swear to God, please. I mean, these are your words. I know. I'm so embarrassed. Well, I didn't really think an old loser like him can immediately turn into a whiny baby. Like, look at him. This is straight up embarrassing. And I'm not even surprised that this was his last resort to get out of trouble. I mean, he did not even allow Chris to read from the chat logs. Drama, drama, and more drama. And that pretty much sums up Gregory's sting for you guys. Despite his several attempts, Gregory finally got what he deserved. Some much needed jail time. Now, we know that pretty much every loser meets the same end, but in this next one's case, things got a bit too chaotic. Good, how are you? <laughs> this guy who you're seeing pulling up into the driveway is Jeremy Todd West. And he might just be the most disgusting man I've covered yet. He first started texting the setup, and within 20 minutes into the conversation, he desperately wanted to meet her. Um, a little too fast, don't you think? So anyways, after like maybe a month or so of continuous texting, he then dropped another major bomb on her. He wanted to marry her. Okay, what? Do you see that confidence? It looked as if he owned the place. Oh. Stacy. Well, I'll give you a hug. Instead, he got exactly what he deserved. A shove. The setup once again handled the situation like a pro and asked him to take a seat instead. Surprisingly, even this prick knew about the show or something similar on those lines. The worry of getting caught loomed over his head across every minute that he conversed with the setup. And just like he'd expected, the show turned out to be legit. Well, Todd, there's something I gotta tell you. I'm on it. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. And this time, he was part of it. The thing is, as soon as Chris stepped inside, Jeremy knew he screwed up. Because there's no way out from this. While Chris continued to fire questions at him, the man turned into this coy being who could not even speak a word. It's crazy how like this one suddenly expect the crew and Chris to believe that they were hot with some kind of a self-realization or enlightenment. But once again, when the camera pops out, Jeremy's reaction was classic. Well, what's the hurry now, bro? Chill out and take a deep breath because your bad days have just begun. However, this next moron came to have some fun, but ended up in some real deep mess. Have a fun uh, time. Have a fun time. Yeah. If you ask me, I think James Fowler was a man of his word. Right from the get-go, he made it pretty clear that he didn't want to chat, but instead preferred to meet people. Yeah, clearly. Just meet and get the deed over and done with ASAP. Yeah, this dude was in a rush too. And just when he thought he was still getting comfy and taking in the surroundings and all, James suddenly tried to pull a fast one. This was the only cue needed for Chris to step in and break his confidence. I am. I'm Chris Hansen, and I'm with Dateline NBC. Yeah. And this is To Catch a Predator. Well, just like any other guy, our man expected Chris to believe that he was just here to hang out. What's crazier is that he even said that he'd already watched the show, which only made things easier for Chris. But here's the twist. James Fowler here was arrested a really long time ago, so this wasn't his first time meeting with someone who he shouldn't. And he admitted it to himself. He was so casual, as if it didn't honestly mean anything to him. Now, can someone tell me why he would drive like an hour and a half just to make some stupid mistake again? It's like he never learned from his mistakes at all. Things didn't get any better in prison as well. Apparently, our man here was still on probation from his first conviction. 
He stated that he'd even got arrested because he never showed up on time for his hearing. He even shamelessly claimed that he was in a relationship with someone who was not his age. Somehow, he just couldn't remember her name. Ugh, this shows how much she meant to him. These men deserve to get wiped off the face of the earth. Just like this next guy who didn't mind driving for three whole hours just to meet the setup. Daniel Peter Kelly is one dedicated man. If only he'd channel his dedication towards a better purpose, Daniel would have been in a better place today. Now, this dude preferred to be the mentor who wanted to have his way with the freshers. To build a sense of interest, he actually explained to the setup how the first time was always very special. So there you go. That's the first red flag right there. And that's when the crew decided to play along and the setup tried to lure him into the trap by saying that she was gonna go shower. Now, this has worked on several creepos. So will this one be any different? Well, Daniel actually fell for it and suggested that he'd help her clean her back. What followed after is way too graphic for me to describe on my channel. Now, if you thought that was cheesy, then can you believe that he said this just after sharing his concerns about getting into trouble for doing the same damn thing? Now, this sting was like no other. And Chris's entry to interrupt this lovely meeting is totally worth a watch. Just as Chris called him out, Daniel too wanted to make a run for it, just like the setup did. And guess what? He actually managed to get away, but not for very long. No, they're my keys. Daniel was literally thrown to the ground despite all the resistance he tried to put up. During the interrogation, Daniel went on to reveal that his wife was away on a business trip, and all he wanted to do was take the setup out for dinner and perhaps a long drive. Yeah, save the BS for some other day, dude. For now, you're headed to where you deserve to be, the jail cell. So you see how all these guys had parallel lives and yet they were willing to give it all up over a bunch of screwed up fantasies? Now, I'm sure there are lots of other weirdos who are worthy of mention and I'll be coming back with more videos on them. But if you wanna discuss more with fans just like myself, don't forget to check out my Discord server. And for those of you who need a little extra, I've got an exclusive server just for you. Now, I believe you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to smack that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was wild, then don't forget to check out this post right here. It's even crazier.